territory, kingdom, or empire. That explains why Megyn Kelly shut down a panelist by saying Obama's not a Muslim. Now you understand why she just signed with CAA, member of the Reich. CAA is the agency that produces most of the pornography and pollution in America. The Creative Arts Agency is run by some of the most despicable, vicious people in the world. I know personally who they are because they hired me a number of years ago for exactly two days. And then they fired me for something I allegedly said. I know how despicable this agency is. They are the ones who, produced the, who produce the pollution that decent people around the world hate. She was just signed by them. What does that tell you? She's a member now of the Reich. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, how this works? So yeah, there's one man who's a nationalist and they're holding back nothing and trying to destroy him. They're going so far as to elevate this 10th rate candidate, Carly Fiorina, who was a nobody. Carly Fiorina is a nobody. She lost the election in California. They know she's an easy pushover for Hillary, which is why they love her all of a sudden. Four weeks ago, they laughed at her. Now, all of a sudden, they embraced her. She's the winner. She's the winner like my dog was the winner. She's not the winner of anything. Nothing. She came off looking like what she is. What winner all of a sudden? Why did they anoint her the winner? Because they need to have someone to make believe was the winner instead of Donald Trump. Good. At their own risk. I only hope that he does become president. And then I hope one other thing. I hope he hires people like me. People like me to run the FCC. People like me to run the NIH. People like me to run his federal bureaucracy for him. Because I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you as I stand here, all of these people who hated him and put him down will be lining up around the block saying, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, that's just a fantasy. Clinton to Trump, start behaving like a president. Savage to Clinton, stop behaving like a nun liar. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You know, I... Savage Nation, the serpent, the serpent not happy with what he has done to the world and to America in a historic first for the Pentagon, has chosen to nominate the first openly gay military army secretary. Eric Fanning will lead the army, which will make him the first openly homosexual civilian secretary of the United States Army. Fanning, who must still be confirmed by the Senate, that's of course a joke. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you heard it first in the Savage Nation. The serpent will not stop. He will never stop. No, the serpent won't stop even when and if he is out of office. The serpent will not stop. I asked again, where did I get the name serpent? Am I being cruel and mean? I told you I have a El Salvadoran housekeeper who I've had for 15 years of my life. She's a devout Christian, goes to church every Sunday, gives a lot of her time to the church. She's a lovely person. I don't know why she likes me, but she does. And she prays for me. So I asked her, they, people are saying Obama's a Muslim. Do you think he's a Muslim? Without hesitation, without my prompting, without my rolling my eyes, she says, no, she said he is a serpent in Spanish. I was taken aback. I said, can you repeat the word serp serpentino? I think she said, I'm not sure. She said serpent and she wriggled her hand in the form of a snake. Is Obama a Muslim? Does it really matter? More on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, 
And here he is, Michael Savage. I think this is Metallica's greatest song, Shortest Straw. Boy, does that describe what we're living through? How the uh, emerging Reich, the New World Order, you call it. I will name it the Reich, since it is the Reich. And the new Reich has determined that America will no longer exist as a sovereign nation. It's been gutted from within, not so much by political figures, but by thieves, plain thieves using political operatives called senators to do trade deals that are against the um, best interests of the nation. That's how China grew so quickly. They grew on our back. They grew on our back. Don't you remember Clinton was exporting factories to China? They were buying whole factories out of the Midwest. They took every machine tool. They took every machine tool to China. You don't remember that. You don't remember how Clinton sacked America, do you? You don't remember any of that. So the Reich has emerged. It's stronger than you could ever imagine. They inserted Obama into the White House by manipulating the election and the morons called the voters. And now all of a sudden, just as they're about to complete their act, along comes a billionaire who is a nationalist and they don't know what to do other than to smear him. They're doing to him everything they've done to Michael Savage and everyone else in the media who has stood up to the Reich, but they figured we're marginal figures, we're not important, we have no power. But now a man comes along who just might save the country, might save the nation's sovereignty, and all of a sudden the issue of whether Obama's a Muslim comes up again. Not because Trump raised it, but because a, a man at a, a campaign rally said Obama's a Muslim, he's not even American, and Trump didn't say, oh, how dare you? You should be executed for that. All he said was, was gonna, well, listen to Trump and see his answer. Then we're going to ask you again about this issue. And then I'm going to tell you what my listener, Steve Travers, a very smart man, wrote. Because I'll tell you right up front, I agree with him. He says, Obama does not live like a Muslim. He drinks, he did drugs, he favors gay marriage, but he favors international political Islam. That says it all. Now the question is, which political side of the Islamic equation is he on? Is he a Shiite? Well, I don't know. The Iranians are Shiites. Yes, but wait a minute. It doesn't fit, does it? Because ISIS is comprised largely of Saddam Hussein's former Republican Guard, and they're all Sunnis. Did you know that? The Sunnis who were excommunicated after Saddam was killed by Bush are now raging across the Middle East to not only regain uh, control over Iraq, but the whole Middle East if they can. And they are Sunnis, which is exactly why Iran opposes them. You don't see that yet, do you? I'm trying to help you with this. It's very important that you... It's very hard to understand the Sunni Shia, Shia thing to begin with. I mean, to most Americans, they, the best, the closest analogy is, is Catholic Protestant. That's the closest analogy we can give you. But that's what it's like. Catholic Protestant wars in Ireland. That's about what the Shia thing... Only it goes back, oh, about a thousand years. See, it's the religion of pieces... And what they do is blow themselves up a thousand years for a thousand years over a, a, a tribal dispute. A thousand years and we're bringing them into the country. They're really going to integrate into the Stars and Stripes forever. Yeah. I'd say the Scimitar is not going to integrate with the Stars and Stripes. I'll say the Scimitar will never, ever integrate with the Stars and Stripes. Ever. So <clears throat> the question of the Muslim comes up. And we're talking about that. And I have to say again, and I'm going to keep saying it now for a month, whether you like it or not. Everything I'm about to tell you and that I have disclosed to you today is described in my forthcoming book, Government Zero. I break new ground. I just don't repeat what everyone else has done. God bless everyone else in the media for doing what they do. I do it differently. I brought it to a new level, a whole new level. We're not talking about things you've already heard. We're talking about things you need to learn about the new Reich, about uh, things such as how Obama's administration is filled with not Marxists, but Maoists. And before we play any sound, I have to go back to what I was really going to talk about and haven't even touched on. I wrote this last night at midnight while watching the movie Leviathan. I was watching how the, well, anyway, how, while watching, watching the movie Leviathan after watching a American Heroes Channel thing on Mao Zedong and how I learned, I knew he killed tens of millions. I didn't know he killed 45 million Chinese who would not conform to his view of the Cultural Revolution. And so I wrote this. I said, on Friday, we're going to talk about Mao's tactics and how the American left, Obama and the Dems, are practicing all but the killings. 
how Mao Zedong was the father of political correctness, how American colleges and schools are mimicking Mao's China with indoctrination on behavior, climate, sexuality, food, and so on. I said to my staff, get Obama the other day saying how his children understand global warming, but older people do not. The same exact pattern, only Mao killed the older generation using the Red Guards, murderous children as young as 10, like the mobs we have seen in Baltimore, Oakland, and Ferguson. And then I said, planning tomorrow's show about Mao, about one in the morning I wrote this. See, I, I really never stop producing my show. People know that. Cl planning tomorrow's show about Mao, the father of political correctness, and how his mass murder of 45 million Chinese who would not conform began with his cultural revolution. Listen to the words, cultural revolution, during which 10 to 12-year-old Red Guards murdered teachers, parents, etc., who were part of the old generation who did not believe in authoritarianism or uh, one-man rule. How Obama and the Democrats are following the same playbook without the murders, dot, dot, dot. And so that's the opening to our number two of the Savage Nation. We're going to talk about Obama. We're going to talk about Mao Zedong's great leap forward huh, that killed 45 million in four years. Did you hear the number? 45 million in four years. Mao Zedong, the father of political correctness. The father of political correctness. So when your children go to the university and they are forced to accept things that they know are false and to sit there for fear of losing a grade or being thrown out of the classroom, you're watching Mao Maoism in action. And there are Maoists in Obama's administration. In fact, one of them openly, proudly said she's a Maoist when she first came to power. And I think her name was Samantha Powers, if I'm not mistaken. She declared she was an open Maoist. Am I right? Does anyone remember that? I, I don't know if, I'm, if I get, I think it's her. One of the chief members of his sorority openly said she's a Maoist with pride. She was not fired for that. Mao Zedong, leader of the People's Republic of China, qualifies as the greatest mass murderer in world history. The greatest mass murderer in world history. During the time that Mao was enforcing the Great Leap Forward in 1958, in an effort to catch up with the economy of the Western world, he oversaw one of the worst catastrophes the world has ever known, according to Frank Dukota, a Hong Kong-based historian, a man who has studied Chinese rural history from 58 to 62, when China was uh, facing a famine. Systematic torture, brutality, starvation, and the killing of Chinese peasants. It exceeded all of what, what, what went on in World War II. 45 million people were worked, starved, or beaten to death in China over these four years. The worldwide death toll of the Second World War was 55 million. 45 million of them killed in China. Now you say, well, why are you bothering to talk about communist China right now? Because we hear about the Holocaust as one of the greatest events of the 20th century, and it was. Six million Jews were killed. About seven million non-Jews were killed by Hitler. And this is very similar to the Cambodian communist dictator Pol Pot's genocide multiplied 20 times over. And I'll tell you more about that today and what he did to people. And the biggest part of this story is the cultural revolution. When people were forced to conform to what you call political correctness, it came directly from that period of human history. 13,000 opponents of of Mao Zedong's new regime were killed in one region alone in just three weeks. And this is by fellow Chinese. So those of you who have the illusion that your military will not turn on you are crazy. Those of you who think that your military are all above doing that are nuts. You know nothing about history. Look at what the Soviet military did during Stalin's time. Look at what the Chinese did during the, hit, uh, the time of Mao Zedong. No, they'll turn on their own kind. What do you think? Because white doesn't turn on white? I like a lot of you think that white people love each other. You have this concept that there's some solidarity in a race. Ha! Ask the Soviets about that. Ask the Chinese about that. If you have that, that juvenile view of uh, racial solidarity. Murdered for Mao. The, the killings China forgot. And the most important part of this are the Red Guards. I want to focus on that for one minute. The Red Guards, Mao's enforcers. And what was that? Well, 
His great leap forward led to the massive starvation of Chinese people. Millions of Chinese starved to death because of 